Mm. And uh, we appreciate your presence here. My name is Emerald Midega. Uh, I am a certified mediator and a lawyer by profession. And I am your, pro, your, med, your moderator for today's meeting. Um, I'd like can, kindly let us begin with the national anthem, first stanza in Kiswahili. Kindly unmute yourselves. You can unmute yourselves so that we do this first stanza of the Kenyan national anthem in Kiswahili. Thank you. Please proceed. Okay. E mungu nguvu yetu ilete baraka kwetu haki iwe ngao na mlinzi na tukae na undugu amani na uhuru raha tupate na ustawi um, karibuni tena uh, thank you so much for being here uh, allow me to begin with a brief background uh, to sort of set the uh, perspective for the meeting for today's meeting and to set the tone of the meeting since 2019, as most of you are aware, or the people that have been here before, uh, there have been several meetings uh, by members of this group, um, and the discussions have been around the role of women in mediation. And the spirit of these discussions has been can be summarized in a twofold approach: to be that how can women in mediation attain influence in leadership, and especially in this field, and uh, what transformative action. Can, can they carry out to improve this field as a profession, being that it is a very young profession. Now, the, at the tail end of these discussions, these meetings uh, culminated into a breakfast meeting that was held on the 8th of March uh, this year. And the meeting was held, the breakfast meeting, some of you may have been in attendance, was uh, inspired, was graced by the Honorable Wanjala, um, the register of the mediation accreditation committee and uh whatever what the discussion points or what everything that was discussed there inspired uh, was very thought provoking and inspired a lot of thought and the output of those of that meeting is what inspired the agenda that we are going to tackle today that we're going to have before us today uh, allow me to just set up some housekeeping rules to facilitate a productive and um, an exhaustive discussion because we have a Herculean task ahead of us, but we have very limited time. So uh, the first is that the first part of this meeting, we will tackle the discussion points. We will share the agenda on the screen and then we will walk through the agenda and each discussion point, point by point, at which point um, you are invited to raise your hand using the taskbar, um, the raise your hand function at the taskbar, and then you can give your comments. Kindly allow, uh, kindly let us uh, maintain the limit, the talking points to say two minutes, so that we can allow everybody to have uh, a say or to have a go around at the discussion. Uh, hopefully when we save time, at the end of it, we can circle back and then anybody that has any comment to add or any uh, question can have an opportunity after that. And then finally, um, as the plenary discussions are going on and uh, maybe someone is discussing and you feel that you have a thought, a comment, a question, kindly use the chat function that has been enabled at the bottom uh, to put in your, your thoughts or your questions, and then we can also circle back and tackle that as we proceed. Um, with that, I will share my screen so that we can now start with uh, the agenda. We can now move forward to the agenda. I believe everybody is able to see the screen. Okay, you're able to see that, okay. Um, so as the agenda says, uh, Kenyan women as professional mediators agenda, uh, meeting information, and I think this is very crucial to capture. The objective of this agenda is to have 10,000 Kenyan women in mediation within the year 2021 and 2022 who are and this is very key, inspired, empowered, and supported, inspired to enter to enter mediation as a profession and, and 
create their impact in mediation, empowered to be able to do the same and supported as well. The tagline uh, being supported, the tagline supporting this agenda is Wajue in brackets about mediation na wakujue as a mediator. Wajue, um, the, the ideal situation would be to get to a point where the minute you say that you are, um, you're, you're talking about mediation, you do not have to go into a long narrative of what is mediation or how does mediation help or how will benef mediation benefit my situation. So wajue mediation as a profession and its benefits and what it can do for the community and the society and wakujue, let them know you as a mediator. With that, I will proceed to the discussion points right at the bottom. I believe that everybody's with me and uh, we are moving together. Um, so uh, right away to the first discussion point, uh, strategic positioning as a, it was noted during the meeting. In fact, it was highlighted. One of the things that was heavily discussed during the meeting was that there is an, a need for strategic positioning as Kenyan, as a Kenyan nomad mediator. And so with this sort of span into a discussion of what are some of the questions we should ask ourselves as Kenyan women mediators to place, to strategically place ourselves in this narrative. So number one, where will mediation be in Kenya in 10 years? Number two, what is my role as a Kenyan woman mediator in this movement? And number three, what advantages and opportunities do I currently have in my possession or at my disposal that can help me move the narrative forward? And what can I, what do I have in my hands right now as we speak that I can use towards this movement? Um, as I had said, we can tackle each discussion point as we move to avoid uh, confusion or uh, loss of, of, of points. So I don't know, there, it is now open for the plenary to discuss at this point. Anyone with any comment? Uh, thank you very much, uh, uh, Mediator Emerald. Uh, my name is Wangari Kabiru, and I would like to be able to chime in on uh, the, the first part, which relates to where will mediation be in Kenya in 10 years. Um, and uh, I, I, I believe that um, we already have um, a great head start. Um, when I say we already have a great head start, is that uh, in quite a number of countries, when you study on their mediation progression, um, uh, the, uh, the, 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 the mediation community has, not, has, has been um, very cohesive, it has been very cohesive and uh, that has supported the development um, of, uh, of mediation. Why I say we have a great head start is that we, we, have, we, we have started and we have continued to have um, such discussions. We've gone virtual now, we have meetups. Um, and so I, I think the, the call is that in 10 years time that there's such a strong movement of the mediation community. And uh, when I say a, a, a very strong movement of the mediation community, um, there's nobody else who will come to organize the mediation community. It is up to the mediation community. So what I see in 10 years time, uh, which I believe is a question that's uh, on the table is that we have a very, um, coordinated, organized, and, um, and self-organized, self-regulated um, mediation community. For that part, I think we are still a bit far because uh, we have groupings here and there. And I think there's a great opportunity even for uh, women mediators to just uh, take on this. Thank you, that is my contribution. Thank you so much, uh, Mediator Wangari. Anybody else with a comment? suggestion, question, anything that can provoke thought towards this discussion. I'm seeing other people chiming in as we continue. Uh, just for, for, for background, we are discussing this agenda and we are currently tackling number one, which is strategic positioning as a, as, as a Kenyan woman mediator. And then to be able to feed into this, uh, what are the questions that we can ask ourselves? Uh, uh, questions such as where will mediation be in Kenya in 10 years? What is my role as a Kenyan mediator? And what are the advantages and opportunities that I currently have at my disposal that can be used to facilitate this movement. 
Any other person with a comment? Okay, is it uh, safe to move forward to the next point? Any other person? Okay. Um, my thoughts on, maybe I can chime in uh, on my thoughts on uh, this discussion is um, strategic alignment is key. Anytime that something is new, something is beginning, strategic alignment is important. And so that you're not just moving in, the, in whatever direction or you're not uh, opportunity, you're not just happening you are causing, you're causing whatever is happening, you're causing your environment. And so strategic positioning, that's why I feel strategic is, uh, positioning is important. And these three questions are relevant because it calls for self-awareness as individuals and also self-awareness as an entity, as a movement, um, self-awareness in terms of knowing where we are going and where we are going, uh, what we intend to achieve, what is the impact that we in intend to create as mediators. So I believe these are some of the important questions that need to be addressed. Um, I'm now moving forward to the second point and I will tie in the second point and the third point because uh, they are in tandem. Um, the Mediation Accreditation Committee acknowledge that they, there is need, there is very high need for creation of awareness and sensitization. And so then the question that follows that is how can we as women mediators participate in this? And then in line with that, they also recognize that there's a huge opportunity to work with the judiciary in areas such as sensitization, which is what ties into the second point. And so then as women mediators, what are some of these extra skills that we have that can be applied and utilized by the judiciary for the benefit of mediation? So what are our thoughts on this? What, what, how can we apply ourselves and move from the narrative of we are waiting, we, are, we, we, we want to see what will happen. How can we cause, how can we cause the environment? How can we create that seismic shift that can now um, create, that can create that space of what we wanna do about mediation and people know you as a mediator? And how can we work with the judiciary? Because in these two points, we see that the judiciary is opening up to us, you know, creating opportunities for, for, for working with them. Any thoughts on this? Hello. Hello, we can hear you. Karibu. Yes, yes. Thank you. Yes. I'm, I'm Fresia. Yes. Just, uh, just a small uh, point that um, uh, as judiciary opens this space mm. for the women mediators, I think uh, it is important for us to also focus on self-development. Yes. Uh, uh, to ensure Okay. Can I be seen now? Yes, you can. We can see you quite clearly. Yes, yes. Karibu. Yes, yes. I'm saying that uh, it is important for us to uh, also start on self-development because uh, when we self-develop ourselves, um, then we also become a brand. And like uh, our colleague has said, that uh, we get known. When we are a brand that uh, we are mediators, it will not just happen by, by, by uh, default. Mm -hmm. There will be some work to be done on us, mm -hmm. as self, also as a team, to ensure we are able to grow as a team. Uh, so my issue is self-development and also branding, self-branding. Thank you. Thank you so much for your point. Anybody else? Anybody else that can chime in? Any other comment?
Hello. Hello. Good evening, Julia. Ah. Good evening. Okay. Hello. Good evening. Good evening to you too. Oh, okay. This is Anne. Mm -hmm. And uh, I would like to add to what uh, my friend has just said. Okay. And this is that uh, if we are going to be successful uh, as, as a group, we need to do a lot of uh, uh, a, a lot of communication, a lot of uh, consultation, so that mm. we can move the way forward together, so that we can move together. And so that uh, uh, if one case is uh, mediated upon the resolutions that are made in such a meeting are the same, same ones that would be, that, that would be made by any, anybody else because of the, the skills are going to be the same. Thank you. Okay. Anybody else? Anybody else? Uh, okay. Uh, I think it is safe to assume that we, it is uh, safe to move to the next uh, discussion. Uh, mediator, mediator Emerald? Yes. Um, I think it um, was it uh, uh, Mini? Mini was uh, speaking, but we couldn't hear her kindly, if I'm not mistaken. Mini? Mini Mangeli? No, it was Anne. Um, she, she, the last she, one. I, last, yeah. It was mediator. It was Anne. She mentioned Julia. Julia okay. Kinando. That's okay. Okay, thank you. That's okay. I, yes, I see Mini Mangeli okay. is um, uh, uh, unmuted, but we can't seem to hear her. So that's okay. Kindly proceed. Oh, okay. 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 Yeah. Kindly proceed, Emerald. Thank you. All right. All right. Um, so uh, the next point is uh, number four. It was uh, we the meeting was informed that uh, the tools that that the judiciary is currently working on tools that are of great interest to us as mediators, and that we need to be on the lookout for for relevance and also for contribution. Uh, one of the tools that uh, they're currently working on is uh, the training manual for mediation. Uh, two, they're also working on a curriculum for mediators. Uh, three, they're also working on CPD guidelines for, mediator, for mediators uh, um, and then for professional growth. And then they're also working on mentorship gu guidelines, uh, having realized the importance of mentorship and to sort of streamline the whole mentorship pro uh, progr the program. And then they also mentioned uh, dealing with the rules on pro of protection against uh, domestic violence, which is currently in the first stage, but uh, open for open for discussion, uh, public discussion. This also ties in with um, the judiciary mediation rules, which are also open uh, for public discussion. Yeah, I think these are very key tools to 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 be aware of and it would be beneficial to be to join it uh, to from the beginning uh, initial to be able to be part of the process from the beginning things like the training manual things like a curric the curriculum for mediators things like the mentorship uh, guidelines which is an a very good tool for young mediators who you have the certificate but you feel lost and you don't know how to go about it you don't know how to to start your career you have a certificate but you're basically stuck or, and you don't know what to do, what is the next thing to do. People who are in the GBV, uh, gender-based violence uh, space, uh, rules on protection against domestic violence uh, by the judiciary and how to handle such cases and mediation within such cases is also a formidable tool that is being prepared by them and, by them and a good tool to be on the lookout for. And, you know, maybe we can use some of the experiences we have because within us as mediators we have those who are counselors uh, people who are in that for example gbv space and you know you have that real-time expertise you have the ground expertise that can contribute to this document that hopefully will you know is intended to help the process uh with that um i'm opening up for discussion
also just also one thing to mention aside from the uh, the judiciary mediation rules we also have the parliamentary mediation bill that is currently uh, uh, being negotiated uh, being uh, discussed that is also open for discussion and it there's a call there's a call for mediators to come together and just you know contribute to this so any any comments on that Good evening. Good evening. Yeah, uh, my, my name is Mini Mangeli. Um, thank you. I think I, I like the bit on uh, mentorship and um, mentoring young, young, you know, mediators, mm -hmm. because I remember, and I think um, we all can remember when we started, we didn't even know where to put our feet. And, and I, I, I occasionally get, um, you know, questions from young mediators. Can I sit in? Uh, can you offer me some sort of internship or, you know, something? All of these questions. And I think uh, there are very many young mediators out there who need to be supported, who need to be held their hands. They need to be, you know, guided through. Mm -hmm. And especially now when we are doing a lot of uh, mediation virtually, I, I think, um, people don't even know how to start you know for instance how do you go about uh, you know creating caucuses on on you know virtually mm -hmm. and i think people are struggling if we can all come out and uh, you know say some of these things uh, clearly and uh, for people to hear i think people are struggling out there and i like that bit on uh, mentorship and i'll i'll be willing to mentor one or two people who who will be ready to be mentored. Um, I, I also liked the issue of uh, self-development and, and branding. I am saying this because I had wanted to speak earlier. I don't know what was wrong with my, my I think I was muted and I didn't know how to okay. go about it. Um, I think also knowing ourselves, knowing who we are, knowing our expertise because we cannot be everywhere. I think uh, I think when we all started, we we could do all manner of you know. But I think as we go along, there's need for us to to have a niche, so that um, in terms of the branding, somebody talked about the branding. They know um, Emerald is good at this, and this is what uh, Emerald can do. I think uh, for now, I think as we go along, that's that's uh, my few suggestions. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mimi. Any other comment, suggestion, question? Okay, uh, I'd like to read out some of the comments. Some there are some comments on the chat. Um, Tabitha says, I think we can have one platform to transact our intentions, policies, and way forward. Um, yeah, she also acknowledges that Wasiliana Hub has done very well. And uh, may we rally behind Wasiliana Hub so that we can build a team. Thank you. Uh, and Reed uh, says, um, oh, she communicates. Yeah, that's, that, that's all. Any other comment? Hello, good evening. Good evening, Christine Karibu. Uh, we lost her. I think we've lost Christine. Oh, she's back. Karibu, Christine, we can see you. Uh, just unmute yourself and proceed. Hello, Christine, can you hear us? Oh, okay. 
Are there any other comments aside from that? Okay. Uh, maybe we can um, we can move forward. Christine, kindly put in your comments so that you're not left behind. We can you can uh, use the chat function to put in your comment in the uh, in the chat, and then I will read it out. Uh, then there will also be an opportunity later to share your comment. Uh, the next one is uh, number five, where the mediation accreditation committee identified the importance the important need for mediators to specialize and sharpen their expertise in specific areas of mediation as opposed to operating uh, as, as jacks of all trades. Uh, this was also uh, very highlighted in the meeting. And uh, there was a sense that there would be more impact created when as mediators, when we, again, this goes along with the, with the, with the, the point on self-development and self-awareness. When you know your strengths and your weaknesses, when you understand where your strengths are and you understand where you can create an impact and which area of mediation um, you can create an impact, right? And then instead of spreading yourself thin across all aspects, and then it is like a drop in the ocean. Um, so there was emphasis in <clears throat> identifying what are your strengths? Which areas do you flourish in? Which is it family mediation? Is it land issues? Is it environmental issues? Which at the end of the day would be more impactful that, than um, a drop in the ocean across all the other spheres. This also uh, went in line with the mediation, the mentorship uh, program, because the idea of the mentorship program as it, will, as it would be fun, uh, fashioned would be it would be used as a tool to help identify what are the mediator's strengths moving forward. And so, if a mediator, a young mediator, goes for uh, uh, mentorship, the men, the mentor writes back a report and is able to identify that this mentee was under me and uh, they seem to flourish in these areas. Is it family? Is it commercial? Is it environment, uh, environmental aspects? And so then the judiciary takes this into uh, cognition and uh, even now that along with their application, it gives strength to what they're able to do. Um, I'll throw this back to plenary again for discussion. Ruto. Kindly, Asela, can I invite you to say something? You had unmuted, sorry, as I was uh, presenting. Would you like to unmute and, and go ahead? Asela, can you hear me? Yeah, uh, hello. Hello, good evening. Karibu sana. Can you hear me? Yes. Can you hear me? Oh, no, these are. Yes, I'm Sela Ruto. Okay. Uh, I wanted to contribute on uh, Mendan's. Can you hear me? Hello. Yes. So, yes. Can, can I continue? Yes. I wanted to contribute on mentorship. Mentorship is actually very, very important because uh, uh, young uh, mediators need to be guided. Uh, me, when I was a young mediator, I was actually guided because I, I was that in um, Nairobi, Nakuru, in several areas, so that you choose where you are specialized. And that is very, very important because succession matters need someone who can really be keen. Because succession matters are very, very, uh, can I say, in, I'm in Andy County and I'm not attached. You need someone who knows how to go about 
and I love that to have young people, young mediators to be trained on, on such issues. Thank you. Thank you so much, yeah. Stella. Thank Someone you. else can add on that, yes. Yeah. Okay, any other comments? Uh, in the interim, I can read out uh, comments from the chat. Mm, Tabitha uh, says, is it possible that we, women mediators, can put together a document with our inputs uh, to both Mediation Bill and Mediation Rules 2020? Is this something that we can consider, something that we can look into, coming up with a document with our thoughts and uh, yeah, our thought processes, our direction, uh, our experience put together um, and, and forwarded as a unit? Is this something that we can consider? as a group, as a movement. Any comment? Any comments adding on to the point, on to what Sela has said, on to also Tabitha's uh, suggestion? Okay. Okay, we can uh, we then move on. And so um, it was also identified that there is a very big gap and a need to for us as women mediators to leverage on technology. Many mentioned something about the virtual space and uh, the the online mediations that, the, that are happening right now in the virtual space. Um, that is one way to look at it in terms of online mediation. But then there's also uh, self-awareness, um, self, um, sorry, sensitization and awareness, creating awareness on mediation and what the impact that it can have on society. How do we reach those people? How do we reach the community? How do we get, even just to get this number that we're saying we want 10,000 women in mediation, how do we, um, create this awareness and create that movement that is bringing more women into mediation and then how do we create that space where more people learn about mediation this is uh, the technology age uh, the age for millennials uh, where you're talking about social media you're talking about instagram you're talking about twitter and uh, and 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 we still have the 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 what would like to loosely call the old dogs who would want to sit down with a good literature um, a good article, a good book, a good review, a good uh, journal, published journal, a good poem that uh, communicates about mediation. Yeah, and all this. And right now we are in a space where we can use, you know, domains and we can use websites and we can use blogs and just push content outside there to tell people like, here, mediation is here. This is what it can bring to the table. This is what it offers the community. This is what mediators can do to, uh, for you. So technology is a huge, huge advantage and a very big tool that can be embraced to move the agenda forward. Any thoughts on that? Hello. Hello. Good evening. Good evening. Um, I had earlier indicated about uh, the recruitment of the, the 10,000 plus uh, women mediators. Mm. Um, and, and, and I was thinking one of the ways that um, that can be achieved is uh, through, you know, active recruitment drives. Um, there, there are so many young mediators coming out of uh, you know, institutes and uh, colleges having learned uh, or being trained in uh, mediation. Mm -hmm. And there's a way you, you can be able to tap on you know, the new mediators. But however, when you do that, I was thinking also there is need to have you know, a plan. Now that you have recruited the, the mediators, what plan do you have in place 
uh, to be able to take them through. Uh, 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 do you have trainings? Uh, are, are there mentorships, uh, programs? Um, so, th so that it is very clear once uh, you have recruited, and then this is what the young mediator or the mediator who is even experienced and uh, they were not in the network before will have to go through uh, right to the end. And then how do you sustain that? Um, th that also can be you know, in, in the plan. So how do you maintain um, and how do you keep mediators interested in, in, in you know, the work of the network and uh, with, with the numbers? Thank you. Thank you so much, Mimi. Thank you for your comment. Karibu sana mediator Diana. Um, she agrees with the seller's point on uh, mentorship and agrees that it is very much possible. <clears throat> and also concurs with uh, mediator Mimi's points. Any other point? Comment, any other chime in? Let's keep the conversation moving. Any other contribution? Okay. Ah, yeah. Okay. Let's uh, proceed to the next one, the final one, which was again now as a broader topic. Uh, we had just tackled that. We can see that mentorship is a very, very huge uh, point of discussion. We had just tackled it in point four uh, in terms of the mediation, the mentorship guidelines that the judiciary is uh, preparing and currently handling, but also mediation, uh, mentorship in mediation as just as its own entity was uh, very, uh, very, um, was very highlighted and discussed. Um, young mediators, people have certificates and the, and the need was, the need that was identified was that people have, you know, you, you go for your training and you have earned your certificate and no one is questioning that, but then, you get stuck. You get stuck because what do I do next? I want to do, I want to practice mediation. Where do I start? Who, where, where do I go? Which mediation can I do? How do I start? How do even something as basic as the opening remarks or opening statement, you read it in theory during that, you studied it in theory during uh, your, your certification, but now putting it in practice. You know, a lot of young mediators are stuck at this point. And, um, so just alongside what um, Mediator Mini had mentioned on having an active re active recruitment drive, you know, and, and having a plan, can part of the plan be, you know, being active towards mentorship, having uh, the, the, the mediators that have gone before us actively coming out to uh, mentor, you know, these young mediators, because at the end of the day, it feeds into the same cause. Any other thoughts? And that yes hello can i say something yes yes karibu thank you so much yeah good evening everyone my name is tabi darotere um on mentorship i i have a different opinion okay <laughs> thank you thank <laughs> you I, I have a very different opinion on mentorship. Okay. I, I am Tabitha, I'm a trainer. And, uh, and, and I am 100% sure that none of my trainees has sought for mediation, simply because my program involves training and mentorship, whereby we learn in class for, for one week, the following week is purely mentorship, whereby before I constitute a class, I have organized several cases at the police station, at the chief's place. We do role, we, we do role plays in class. Then from there, I work with my students. We go to the chief's office. We handle uh, family matters, uh, succession matters, 
and I can assure you none of my mediators seek for mentorship. We are responsible for, uh, for, this, for, this, for the mediators we train. I strongly believe that you cannot go to Kenyatta University or University of Nairobi, do medicine, and then go out there to seek for internship. You are listed by the university as a complete package. You need to go out there and work. It is, it is I personally find it wrong. I find it unethical. I find it unprofessional. You just have a person in the class for five, for five days. You get their money, walk away, and then leave them stranded. I, 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 I think it is not fair at all. And then when they come back to you for mentorship now, you have nowhere to take them. Before you organize a training, kindly have cases that you can mentor them. Let us not be in a hurry to get money and go. Mm. People, don't, people do not want to, to, to spend an extra coin. I went to Machakos. I was there for, for two months. I am very sure out of, out of the 45 um, uh, people I mentored, none needs mentorship from anywhere else. We handle the cases. I would, I would, I would do it as they observe. We comediate, and then I supervise the several do it. Even as I sit here, somebody like Mwashimiwaki Nesidete has done so many on her own. In fact, she has resolved so many cases in Makueni on her own. I have so many agreements that, that she has written. What is wrong with other trainers? If we all did that, who would go to seek for mentorship? I think I think we trainers have a responsibility. Let us not burden the judiciary by sending people for mentorship. When we train them, let us release mediators who can work the judiciary. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Thank you so much, Tabitha. Uh, sorry for that uh, very elaborate point. And thank you for the good job that you're doing for creating uh, uh, creating that space where your 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 the, your students are able to come out in confidence and move in stride and are able to actually move from from day one. Uh, thank you so much um, for your input. At, at this point, I'd like to just mention that we have uh, around fourteen minutes to the end of uh, of this uh, session, so maybe we can move along and just try and see we have covered all the discussion points one uh just as a moment uh, as a point of uh trying to move forward and trying to think out of the box and trying to look at how we can move some of these uh discussion points uh it was discussed well, who are some of the mediate who are the some of the stakeholders that we can you know reach out to who are some of the uh stakeholders that can uh, help with this agenda or facilitate this agenda and we identified some of them of course uh, the biggest stakeholder of course is us as mediators um, to, who are committed to even go to the extent of going to the grassroots level and creating awareness uh, we're talking of mediation service centers uh, of course the judiciary is a huge huge um, uh, stakeholder another one another big one is the local administration uh, by that we mean the chiefs and the police uh, just Tabitha has just mentioned how she goes ahead uh, to create uh, scenarios and, and cases and, and, and lines up cases for her students at the chiefs and the, at the chiefs camp and the police, which is now even facilitates the whole mentorship program. Um, so the bigger question is, are we able to create a uniformed, trustworthy and reliable outfit, right, that, that we can approach? Yeah, this uh, administration, uh, the local administration outfit. Can we approach the county governments? You know, is it something that we can consider? Um, yeah, and and uh, yeah, what are your thoughts on that? Uh, Emerald, can I kindly add something, please? Yes, 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 Karibu. Uh, um, I, I also do add on to what I have said. The, the people that I have trained, we have a WhatsApp group that we do CPDs every Thursday. Okay. We do CPDs. In fact, if you look up at the, at the wall of, of mediators, uh, on Thursday we had one about the child adoption, whereby mm -hmm. the deputy director was speaking to us. Next Thursday we are having another one about um, um, families. Mm -hmm. So, uh, uh, besides, it doesn't cost much when you're able to develop the people you train. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and in fact, at this point, I would love to say, I would wish to be challenged. A single mentor that I've trained who is not seeking for, actually some are even doing mediation 
uh, cases for pay. So mm -hmm. we do. We we have a WhatsApp group where we invite we invite um, experts to talk to us on different issues. Mm -hmm. We have a psychologist who who, who who teach us about uh, personality, and mm -hmm. then uh, have um, um, childhood experiences and how to apply it to mediation. We have counselors. We have. In fact, in the next two weeks, we are inviting a high court judge from the local courts to speak to, to us on a topic. Mediators, to me, the back stops with, with, with the trainers. We should not be having an issue about working, training, having mediators who cannot work. Let the trainers be answerable. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Tabitha. Uh, Frasia, mediator Frasia says uh, she, she appreciates uh, Madame Ruterio's uh, approach. Uh, where role modeling is combined with real practicals and uh, believe, and says that this actually sorts out a lot of people who are actually getting stuck. So we are seeing that this is actually an ongoing reality. But then if we can have more Tabithas dealing with uh, the, the mentorship issue as, as she is dealing with it, then I think this would be a thing of the past. Uh, any other comments? We are now at uh, 10 minutes. And I would love for everybody to have an opportunity to express themselves. I don't know, is there anybody who feels uh, they have not captured, they've not had an opportunity to speak their mind? The spirit of, of this agenda is, um, or rather the intention of this agenda is to, as, as much as we are talking about individual uh, self-development, which is of course very important because how do you communicate, com uh, how do you contribute to the greater good before you are aware of self? But also uh, the bigger, the broader aspect of it is that looking outside, as, as opposed to just looking inwards, you also look outside and we start uh, facing how can now, how can we, what are the needs that the society has that mediation can satisfy and how can we as mediators satisfy that need? And, how can we move together towards satisfying that need so that it's not just me as a mediator stuck and wondering, okay, what can I do? We now need to move to a point where it is us as a collective, just as we mentioned earlier, how can we create this uniformed, tailored outfit that is trustworthy and reliable that when you walk into a space, people say, oh, these are the mediators and we rely on them, we trust them and we know that once they come on board, issues will be settled. How can we move along that direction? Uh, final, final comments before I call in our convener for just closing comments. Is there anybody else with a comment? Any other comment? Parting short as we Kenyans like to say. Let me read out the comments. Let me see. Ah, this is good. Tabitha also uh, says that they have organized a mediation training for the deaf. Uh, this will be the second group. Great things, Tabitha. <laughs> we need uh, to see more of this. Thank you so much. This is, this is how you create ripples. Ah, Frasia says, um, um, Mediator Frasha says, uh, Madam Tabitha, could you kindly allow some of us who are under mentorship, you know, peep into the planned session? You know, that's, that's a request to be involved in your sessions, an interest to be involved in your sessions. Any other comments? You know, um, Okay, I think at this point, at this point, I would like to call our convener, uh, Mediator Wangari, to give us um, our last remarks, closing remarks, as we very quickly draw towards the end of this uh, very productive and I think also very exhaustive discussion. Uh, very many points have come out different aspects as Tabitha has pointed out. We are, we are seeing different ways that we can approach some of these issues that we've been experiencing. And then um, hopefully moving forward from this discussion point, we can come up, we can have action points that can now move um, the discussion forward and move it from an ideal or an idea and now move it into action. Yeah, Mediata Wangari, Karibu. Uh, 
I wish to I, I wish to thank you, uh, Mediator Emerald, for uh, guiding us through this uh, uh, very um, uh, I will say a, 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 a start and a continuation of uh, a journey that uh, we may not be uh, concluding um, uh, right now, but. Uh, this particular session is a very uh, big and um, actually a, a, a very high step uh, in the in this conversation around uh, women uh, in uh, in, uh, in mediation uh, and specifically driven by the women in mediation leadership. So my name is Wangari Kabiru and I convene the Wasili and Ahab community. It's a great delight to be able to um, see new faces and also just I mean hear what for us we we say is. Uh, voices in the changing world because the reality is that uh, our standard professions uh, it doesn't matter what area or field um, you started your career in or you are in a career in and uh, mediation is probably something you do on the side or if it's something that you're doing um, uh, uh, on a full-time basis or you're creating a pathway for it the world has shifted and there's a great need for voices in this changing world and it is what for us uh, excites us when we are able to um, have um, this particular session. As um, uh, our session host, um, uh, Emerald Bidega pointed out, the uh, conversation uh, uh, to Wasiliana Hub uh, with regard to uh, what is the role of women mediators? How can they um, add value to mediation uh, in Kenya? We started off in uh, 2019, uh, carried on in 2020, and uh, in 2021 is uh, we, we really have got some good clarity and we get excited that we are able to um, loop in um, the, uh, loop in uh, women who can be able to uh, uh, move on with this um, agenda. I think uh, just uh, not I think uh, just as um, um, uh, Emerald has pointed out, we are not yet concluded on this discussion, but today gives us a great um, launch pad to our declaration that we are co we uh, committing to 10,000 plus women mediators in Kenya. Uh, when I say that, it comes with a very big question. What will that look like when you know that in Kenya there are plus 10,000 professionally trained women mediators? What does that mean for our families? What does that mean for businesses? What does that mean for society in general? What does that mean for Kenya? Statistics indicate that hardly do you have women leading, even in uh, the areas that relate to peace mediation. <clears throat> Why is that? And the same statistics indicate that there are women as equal or even more than men who are trained and professional in um, as mediators. <laughs> that is what we are speaking into. We are clear that it is possible to have a, a movement uh, that is able to have women at the fore. And that's why when we started this conversation, we started it off as women in mediation leadership. And that's the action group that is driving this conversation that we have today. Mm -hmm. uh, I thank once again, our session host, uh, mediator Emerald Midega, because I know that we will uh, be able to have to consolidate the, uh, the, the, the discussion that we've had today. Uh, the, and then we would be able now to say, this is now the agenda that we have. But the bigger thing we are sitting with right now is a call to action to each of us. We are the ones who have already been called. So if we are targeting plus 10,000, you are the one. Where is the other 9999? You are the one. Where is the other 9999? Yeah, 9,999. That other 9,999, is it that they require a mentorship? That other 999, is it that they do not even know that there is a, a profession known as mediation? And so we are the ones to reach out to them. As we hosted sessions, uh, for, as I indicated from uh, 2019 and 2020, we have been able to uh, gather uh, uh, insights and input, uh, insights from our colleagues with regard to where can our touch points be. Women have chamas. We are in our churches and our religious spaces. What stops us as, we are, as, as, as the women mediators from running uh, weekly sessions, inviting our peers and friends and letting them know that there is mediation? It's a sort of radical uh, conversation that we are asking ourselves. 
because when we say plus 10,000, I am one. So the other 9,999, it is actually a Herculean uh, task that we are giving ourselves. You know, mm -hmm. those goals that we say the big, hairy, or just ones, it's not needed because we are speaking into how will mediation make the difference for this country, Kenya, and we know that we are needed. We are moving into an election year. That is if we are already not even there based on what um, is happening in the country. What mm. difference does it make if Kenya has ninth, an additional 9,999 women who are out there at the grassroots and in their communities and they understand mediation, they actually are mediators and they are practicing. So that is what we are speaking into when we ask ourselves, where are the other sisters? We are delighted and excited because we have brothers who are with us on this pathway. And we are looking forward to be able to journey with this together as sisters and brothers and being able to support the interests and needs of each of us. The way we see our, our, ourselves moving forward with this is that yes, we have been able to have this conversation. We will be able to um, collect the views that um, have come from this conversation and plus um, others share them out uh, with, uh, to, to, to ourselves uh, and or also to our peer colleagues, because this agenda is bigger than myself and bigger than you, and also bigger than you and I combined. It is achievable when we are all together. Then subsequent to that, we will be able to make another call. Uh, right now, our sessions are virtual. Uh, we have been, we had been hosting our physical sessions in the previous years. We will make another call and come back and now say, this is our action plan. Okay. What that action plan will be saying is, so Jane, what are you taking on? So Mary, what are you taking on? So Jane and Mary, you have interest in this area or you have competence in this area. Can you move the rest of us in this particular um, area? It has been two years and we are just starting off. So if you've just connected with us, please feel at home. Uh, Wasiliana Hub is a great place to be. We are an open community, an open community meaning that if there's something that you're seeking to achieve, we are a great place to be that um, uh, rail and or railroad and then you can be able to, you know, place your SGR and run with it. That's simply who Wasiliana Hub is, but I assure you, you, you have found a great place to be. Please let your other colleagues know as you get information uh, from Wasiliana Hub. Uh, you will be receiving emails directly now that you're registered and you have, um, it is free to be able to share them with your other peers and other colleagues. So I thank you once again. And um, the conversation that we are having uh, and uh, as we come now into our next section is we are looking at three things. One, local actions to take. We are very clear that we are domestic. We come from homes, we come from communities. What are those local actions you can take there? We come from workplaces, what are those local actions? Secondly, is towards movement building. The conversation that we are having, as I've said, as I said earlier on, is much bigger than myself, yourself and I combined. It is a movement. So how are we going to take local actions towards movement building? And thirdly, to generate positive impact on at least one SDG goal, one sustainable development goal. As women mediators, we are clear that we have uh, the Kenya Vision 2030 and the sustainable development goals. The question we are asking ourselves, so what is the contribution of you and I as women mediators towards the achievement of the sustainable development goals? The 17 goals are as broad as our interests are. They range from matters to do with climate, matters to do with agriculture, matters to do with commerce. And those are fields we come from as women mediators. They uh, go into fields of justice. They go um, as far as fields that relate to even how society, uh, 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 co uh, society coexists. Those are fields of interest to us. And when we say that they are fields of interest to us, we have the competence. 
in this conversation, we have someone who has worked within a financial, in a financial institution. So if you're asking ourselves, how are women mediators going to be able to serve the financial services sector? We have the person who has the answer for us. If you're asking ourselves, how will, mediation, how will women mediators and mediators in general be able to cause a shift in how the judiciary runs the court annex mediation program? Within ourselves, we have colleagues who have been insiders and we have colleagues who are insiders. And so we have an understanding of how we can cause mediation to provide a lot of value to our nation. And that transcends across um, all sectors. So what we are saying is that we want to see a shift in the quantity of mediators. That has been very deliberate when we said that we are talking about plus 10,000. That is quantitative, a quantitative measure a big, hairy, audacious goal. And in addition, we are saying that we also aim for a qualitative shift through the engagement of mediators at two levels, the vertical and also the horizontal of the mediation value chain. Just like any other sector, mediation has a value chain. And we are asking ourselves, how can we have women at the horizontal and the vertical, whichever tangent you take, that you will find women mediators and you will find me, women mediators leading at it. I invite you to please take time to listen to the uh, recording of um, our last session with our Honorable uh, Moses Wanjala, who is the Registrar of the Mediation Accreditation Committee. Uh, it is available on the Wasiliana Hub uh, YouTube. Uh, 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 channel. And I invite you so that you can listen into what he said as a value that women bring to the table. Sometimes it's great when we are reminded, and especially when we are reminded by the other gender. So it was also very deliberate when we invited our Honorable Moses Wanjala, and he did play his part very well in just reminding us what do women bring? And so what do women mediators, what can women mediators bring onto the table? So I invite you to take time to listen to um, the recording. We will share it um, uh, by email uh, uh, in the event um, you need to be able to access it um, uh, through your email, but it is available on the Wasiliana Hub um, website. So I invite you to listen to it. And even without listening to it, we know the value we bring on any table. One of the greatest things that I've heard and also that um, has uh, been reiterated is that as women in whatever sector, we are now not saying make room for women on the table. Mm. What we are saying, there are not tables anymore. It's a field, it's a playground and we are resetting the rules. So that's the invitation as we are saying that as women, how do we take the leadership in mediation? And how do we take the leadership in mediation serving the nation? As our session host mediator, our Emerald Midega, kept reminding us, this is not about you, this is not about me. It's about how mediation will serve this nation and then generally as a result, how it will serve the world. I think with the times that we are in right now, we have, we have actually become cognizant to the fact that we are more connected than ever before. And let's make use of that connection as we drive to the quality and also to uh, increasing the quantity of mediators that we have in this country. So I thank you for joining us for this particular session and I commend you. And as uh, we go into Sunday, please have a good Sunday. We are looking forward to the next session we'll be having uh, together and the next time we will be together. On this call, we have uh, one of our, um, our mediators um, uh, who is uh, mediator Okenya Okenya, uh, who has uh, joined us on this call. Um, I wish to kindly uh, invite uh, mediator Okenya to please give us um, a, a word uh, uh, to, uh, uh, today before we, uh, we, we exit. Uh, kindly, Mediator Okenye, you may give us um, a word bef uh, before we exit. Mediator Okenye, 
and I'll take back and then pass on back to um, our session host, uh, Emerald. Karibu sana, Mediator Kenya. Uh, good evening, members. Good evening. Uh, good evening, I, Mediator Kenya. Uh, thank you, thank you. Sorry, I have joined a, a, a bit extremely late because uh, I had to go and pick my wife from the airport. I have gone around, round, round from Samoja. But the one thing I want to say, I don't want to take your time, is it that uh, mediation, mediation is there. And uh, I am joining this forum that is we as women, the space is big, we cannot fill it. It now remains upon us to strive for excellence. Let's come on board, let's come boldly, let's come fearlessly, and let us move together as a team, as a post team. It is we against the forum, but not I against you. Thank you so much, Wangari. I think uh, probably that's what you meant. I don't want to take much time. Asante sana, uh, the mediator of Kenya, Kenya. Uh, mediator Kenya, Kenya, Kenya is uh, uh, one of our uh, uh, quite senior mediators uh, within the Wasiliana Hub community as we started off the community and uh, uh, he also uh, uh, continues to serve as a mediation mentor within uh, our team as uh, we support mediators who have just um, uh, gotten their mediation uh, uh, certification. And we thank you, Mediator of Kenya, because this is a mission that will take all of us, not just some of us. It will take the women, it will take the men, and we are looking forward as, or we get very excited as we have more uh, of our male peers who join us in this uh, particular uh, journey. So just as the International Women's Day uh, 2021 um, hashtag, choose to challenge. So I think it is really apt that we are having this conversation at this uh, time. And I thank you once again, at, uh, our session hosts, Mediator Emerald Midega, and also everyone who's joined into the call. Uh, back to you, Mediator uh, Emerald Midega, and uh, we look forward to be able to have our next sessions together. And I really thank everybody who was able to join on the call and those who are not able to join on the call, the recording will be made available. God bless you and uh, have a blessed Sunday. Back to you, Mediator Emerald. Okay, thank you so much, Mediator Wangari. Uh, thank you so much for the closing remarks. Um, I think I can just, just to reiterate uh, some of the things that have been said, uh, some of the things that have been said by me, the, the convener uh, and also mediator uh, Okenyo Okenyo who said move boldly and uh, fearlessly, uh, which is exactly what we need to do if we are to achieve this uh, very bold move of 10,000 Kenyan women in mediation within the year 2021 and 2022. And most importantly, uh, we want not just have 10,000 Kenyan women in mediation, but 10,000 Kenyan women who are inspired uh, to, to, to join the work and do the work and, and are empowered and are able to do the work and are also supported in their ability to do the work. And then also leaving a parting shot of wajue na wakujue, I think this uh, speaks very keenly um, to, to what we are saying, because it's it's a movement. What we are talking about is a movement, as uh, Mediator Kenya has said, that it's not it's not about I, it's it's about us, you know, working together as opposed as opposed to me and you against each other. How can we pull resources? How can we work, come together and push the agenda forward? The agenda that is mediation as a profession. Uh, with that being said. Uh, we have uh, come to uh, the end of the, the session and uh, I'd like us to wind up uh, with, a, with a national anthem in English, the last stanza, which I think is also in spirit of uh, what we are talking about and what we are saying mediation can do for the nation, what mediation can do for the people of Kenya, what mediation can do for our community, uh, especially in line with everything that is happening within us and without us, what we are observing. Uh, someone has mentioned that, you know, we are within, we may very well be within the election year. And uh, that is also an aspect that we need to be on the lookout for. So as we close out, we um, say the last stanza of, uh, of the national anthem in English. 
Okay. Uh, let one, let all with one accord in common bond united, build this our nation together and, the, for, and for the glory of Kenya, the fruit of our labor, fill every heart with thanksgiving. Thank you so much for everybody that has taken time to be here today, everybody that has contributed. Uh, we look forward to the next session. We look forward to expanding this conversation and moving forward uh, and being able to come up with action points so that we can move this from an idea to a movement, to something that we can see that the car is on the road and moving. Thank you so much. Enjoy your evening and your Sunday. Bye. Bye. Thank you very much. Thank you.